Zaki believes that he and Muslims respect Jesus more than Christians because they follow the teachings of Christ in the Gospel. He tried to prove this by distorting the scriptures of the Holy Bible and even contradicted the Quran in the process. In this video we will learn of the deceptions of Zaki and Aik and it will be proven even from the Quran. So let's take a look. So you say Jesus is a messenger of God? I say peace be upon him after his meal. So I respect Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, more than you, Brother Patrick. Because when I take his name, I have to say peace be upon him. If I do not say that, I'm wrong. So I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, more than you. I follow his teaching more than you. Did you hear that? Zaki believes that he has respect for Jesus more than Christians simply because he says the phrase, peace be upon him, every time he mentions the name of Jesus Christ. No, Zaki, Jesus is in no need of your peace, but rather, you are in need of his peace. As a matter of fact, this is complete disrespect for Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at what Christ has to say about this. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus also taught again, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So please, Zaki, don't insult Christ and say, Peace be upon him, every time you mention his name. He does not need your peace, but rather you need his. So next time you mention the name of Jesus Christ, you should say, Your peace, O Christ, be upon me. Let's look at the rest of the video to see more of Zaki's deceptions and be guided back to the truth. And if you want, I can prove it to you. That's a different argument, not for tonight. Sorry? 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 That's a different argument and not for okay, tonight. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll give you a few things. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Fine? If you read the Bible, he was circumcised on the eighth day. Fine? Majority of all the Muslims are circumcised, the Christians aren't. So if you say Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then it's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 to 8. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse number 8, we should not have pork. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5, should not have pork. Muslim don't have pork, most of the Christians have pork. If you read the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, it says you should not have alcohol. Muslims as a whole don't have alcohol, most of the Christians have alcohol. If you say Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. We love him. We respect him. If you say, I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and don't follow his teachings, your love is false. We, therefore, mashallah, I love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, more than most of the Christians. Because I follow his teachings, I respect him, I revere him. So here, Zaki Naik is claiming that he and Muslims follow the teachings of Jesus Christ more than Christians because of the following points. 1. Christians eat pork, whereas Muslims do not eat pork. 2. Christians drink alcohol, whereas Muslims do not drink alcohol. 3. Christians do not believe in circumcision, whereas Muslims do. He quotes verses from the Old Testament to prove his case. However, in this scenario, we will let the Quran itself refute him, and then we will turn back to the truth and have a look at Christ's true, authentic teachings. Let's start with the Quran. The Quran claims that Jesus said, And I come confirming that which was before me of the Torah, and to make lawful some of that which was forbidden unto you. I come unto you with a sign from your Lord, so keep your duty to Allah, and obey me. In Arabic, Jesus is saying that he came to make halal that which is haram. Now let's have a look at the authentic teachings of Christ in the Gospel to find out what these unlawful things were which Christ made lawful and refute Zaki. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me everyone and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. 
After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into the heart but into his stomach, and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. That was one of many teachings of the gospel regarding Jesus making all foods halal to eat. Now let's look at Zikir's deception about alcohol and see how he twisted the scriptures. He quoted Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. He claimed that these verses say that you should not have alcohol. However, we will take a look at these verses to see what they really say. But first, let's look at what Jesus taught about wine. The Gospel tells us that the first miracle Christ performed was to turn water into wine. Let's have a look. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it into the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. Why did Jesus turn water into wine for this feast? Because the book of Psalms teach us that wine makes glad the hearts of man. Now let's turn to the scriptures which Zakir distorted. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1 teaches the following. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. So what does the prophet Solomon mean when he teaches us not to be led astray by wine? Well Zakir Naik leads us to the right verse with the answer, which is Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. So let's have a look. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 teaches us the following. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1 and Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 do not say that a person should not have alcohol but rather they teach that a person should not get drunk it has always been a teaching of the Bible that drinking alcohol is permitted whereas getting drunk is a sin just as eating food is permitted whereas gluttony which is eating too much food is a sin so there you have it we just saw Zakir Naik do what he does best, which is distort the Holy Scriptures and lead people astray. What is more frightening is that the crowd clap and cheer for him as though he has spoken the truth, and they follow him. However, Christ has a warning for the crowd regarding Zakir Naik. Jesus said, Let them alone, they are blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch.